Hello, my name is Kevin Anikowski, and this episode is on attribution. Attribution of actions, according to attribution theory, can either be situational, i.e. based on circumstance, or dispositional, i.e. based on the person. But in most cases, let's be honest, it's because people are horrible. Like the horrible people who actually drive 55 on the highway holding everyone up. Extremely selfish. Now, That was a misattribution because the speed limit signs are situational factors at play. More specifically, this was a fundamental attribution error, thinking bad behaviors of others are because they're just ratchet people. Something interesting is that the fundamental attribution error tends to increase in cultures with a higher price on personal achievement. Hmm. Anyways, this is the same as correspondence bias in the case of MCAT specificity. They are both the tendency to attribute situational factors to dispositional causes. Actor-observer bias can also be used in this scenario, but it can also be used to explain the self, self being the actor and the actor-observer bias, i.e. bad things happen to me because I'm really just having a horrible day. Now, this is helping your own self-esteem and feelings, right? It's serving yourself, right? Well, guess what? That's called the self-serving bias. That means that actor-observer bias incorporates both correspondence bias that we just mentioned and self-serving bias. Another example of self-serving bias is that Bill Gates would not have been where he is without the hard work, yes, but also he had to be born in a three-year time span. Should he say that the success was entirely dispositional, he would be using the self-serving bias. The tendency to use one or the other is considered your attribution style. There are three main models of attribution style. In the mid-1960s, Jones and Davis developed the correspondence inference theory, which stated attribution was based on three categories, just like the other two models. These three main tenets of correspondence inference theory were amount of choice, social desirability, and non-common effects, which are whether the person's action has a common or unusual effect. Thus, it would be a dispositional attribution if the person chose to do it, was socially undesirable to do, and resulted in a unique, non-common circumstance. For instance, the person that got up to leave in the middle of the class and tripped was all her or his doing. For correspondence inference theory, relate the C in correspondence to choice, I in inference, to desirability, and E in theory, even though it's not an E, to non-common effects. Okay, that can help you remember. Next, a couple years later, the covariation model by Kelly was developed. This model has three main tenets worth knowing. Consensus cues, i.e. if the other person would do it in the same situation. Distinctiveness cues, i.e. is it usual or distinct for this person to perform the activity, and consistency cues, i.e. does the person do the same thing every time the situation occurs. Attribution would be dispositional if others would do it, this person usually does this behavior in other situations, and this situation makes them do it every single time. For example, someone who laughs at the sight of seeing new paint dry, what a weird thing that would be, no one else laughs at paint drying to my knowledge, They always laugh at new paint, and specifically this paint makes them laugh each time. Although, they may be actually just sniffing the paint, so who knows. But lastly, the three-dimensional model of attribution by Bernard Weiner, again, has three tenets. First, the locus of control, or causality, which is based off of your locus of control. Next, stability. Does the behavior change over time? And lastly, controllability. Can you control the situation? So if you succeed, you tend to make internal attribution through the internal locus of control, but for others, you tend to associate it with an external locus of control for their success, saying, oh, it was because of something else. To memorize this, I relate it to a semi-inappropriate story, so feel free to skip to the next episode, because this is the last thing for this episode. In the past, I used to work at a 3D print lab at a religious university. 3D prints, when they were finished, were on this hovering, pristine pedestal, and I thought it would be hilarious to 3D print a penis for my boss to find in the morning. Now, 
To make that happen, I would have had to make sure that the penis was stable and didn't curve too much. And to do this, I would have needed to control the design. Now here's the best part. The person that made the 3D model of attribution was Weiner, but his name is basically spelled like Wiener. And so to print, I need to control the stability, thus locus of control and stability of behavior, and controllability of the situation. So 3D model, 3D printing, Wiener, controllability, stability, great. So all of those, there's a lot of information there. Just take some time and look it over. And that's the end of the episode.